Hello folks and welcome to your next Grey Goose update and boy have we got some goose progress for you. So let's take a look up front first. Now in the goose's former engine bay uh, we have quite a lot going on. Uh, we have our Nissan Leaf inverter now installed. Uh, last you would have seen here we had a Lexus inverter in here but I decided that I would go with the leaf inverter uh, to make a, ch a change. Um, one of the reasons we wanted to do that is that so far to the best of my knowledge um, the CAN messages needed to run the Gen 1 leaf inverter uh, have not been made available um, so that is something that we're going to be doing uh, we're going to be having a look at give you guys a bit of better light here we are going to be having a look at the possibility of running uh, the gen 1 leaf inverter uh, via can and we've also then, to the best of my knowledge, Johannes is working on a drop-in board and he's had some very good success now with the Gen 2 uh, leaf motor and inverter running with field or field orientated control. So if that turns out that we can't in a reasonably timely fashion get the leaf inverter to run from CAN, uh, then we will basically use one of his drop-in PCBs in there. So, motor and inverter in. Uh, motor three-phase power connected up, basically between inverter and motor. We've got three nice big 50 square cables with our resolver and uh, 12 volt feeds and can lines uh, going to the inverter and they are coming back in here to the e-box uh, where the original DME and so on would have lived for the internal combustion engine. So we've got our uh, cables here basically ground, switch live, permanent live, can high and can low. So in here then we will be putting our controller uh, which will hopefully send the necessary CAN messages uh, to the inverter uh, from a throttle signal and uh, you know brake signal that kind of thing. So that is our that is the front in terms of the inverter and the motor. Uh, we've got our high voltage junction box uh, built and installed here now. So this is kind of the usual suspects, it's got contactors, fuses, battery monitoring, switching, pre-charge resistors, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, on this side here, I have a 5 by 16 square um, cable coming in and uh, that goes all the way back under the vehicle and comes around to our former uh, petrol inlet where we have our cable here for our charging port um, now the reason for going with 5 by 16 square uh, for charging on this particular car is that we're going to be using the Tesla Gen 3 um, charger which is something like 18 or 19 kilowatts so we're looking at you know quite a bit of AC current uh, be it single or three phase uh, that we need to account for. In terms of battery monitoring and displaying here, uh, we will be using the Power Watcher Mark III, which is currently on the way to me, and we'll have a video on that uh, when we are getting that guy installed. Uh, so pretty much DC cabling is also in under the car. Contactors here, it just basically connects in. So on the back there, you'll see those two two orange cables, or our DC cables. 
and uh, they go all the way to the back of the vehicle uh, for our battery, which I will show you next. So in the back of the vehicle then, we have most of our uh, Renault Zoe battery uh, trial fitted in here. Uh, you'll be able to see nine of a total of 12 modules here now. Uh, what you're looking at, these eight modules are sitting on a 12 millimeter thick aluminium plate, uh, which will be secured down to the vehicle chassis. And then each of the battery modules themselves will be bolted down to that. Uh, so we have eight here on the plate. We'll have one at the side here and we will have three in where the uh, spare wheel well uh, would have been, making for a total of 12 modules and nominally uh, 360 volts, uh, which have a charge voltage of around 400 volts. Um, this is our full pack here. Uh, we will have a cover going over this made of clear polycarbonate, uh, which we will be mounting the safety disconnect and the fuse from the Zoe battery uh, will be mounted kind of in here just above where the 12 volt battery would be so you'll be able to just pull that out to uh, shut off the high voltage uh, system we've got our two as I say you can see one of them here the big 50 square cables uh, bringing that high voltage up the front into our high voltage junction box now with pretty much the full pack in there. Just want to show you guys here that there's uh, you know, no ride height problems with the vehicle here. In fact, um, if, we look, if we come and look at the front, you know, we're, we're way high. Uh, so as I said on social media recently, and some people were quite surprised by it, that you know, it kind of used to be that when you do a conversion, uh, you were putting so much weight into the car compared to normal internal combustion engine uh, weight that you know you were just sitting down to put in stronger springs and all kinds of things but now with modern batteries and components that we can get uh, the damn cars are turning out lighter guys uh, so we end up you know putting coilovers and lowering springs in the cars um, I mean, even the pans are out there. The Panzer is 250 kilos lighter, even with a Tesla drive unit in it. Um, so, you know, that's to be to say nothing when we eventually get back to looking at the E65, um, you know, which is currently, yeah, <laughs> seriously got a, a ride height pro problem, even with the Lexus. Um, hybrid gearbox in there um, so yeah this is you know another project for us but back on the E46 Touring for the minute um, what's left to be done on the battery is just to bolt it down and wire it um, leaving that to the last because that brings up the high voltage system um, up front all the high voltage wiring is done uh, we're ready to start connecting in here. In fact, that's what I'm doing now uh, is I'm, go I'm going into the e-box now to start wiring up uh, the 12 volt feeds to the high voltage junction box and the inverter. And then we'll be, st we'll be able to start looking at talking over CAN to the inverter and designing a little controller to put in there to take our analog signals and uh, hopefully be able to make our car run with our Nissan Leaf uh, drive system. So that is about what I've got for you guys today on the Goose. Um, I know it's been a lot of Tesla Model 3 hacking recently in videos. Um, you know, I know that's not everyone's cup of tea, um, but it is something that I very much enjoy and hence you're going to get to see lots of it. So. I will leave you guys there. Uh, don't forget to dislike, don't share, and unsubscribe. Um, 
Check the links in the description to Patreon and PayPal should you wish to financially contribute to any of this particular madness. Also, all of the projects I'm working on are heavily documented on the openinverter.org forum, and there'll be a link in the description to that. So do please uh, visit and sign up for a free account and read through, and if you would, uh, please do contribute on there. So, that's it for now. Until next time, um, happy leaf inverter can messaging. <laughs>